On today's show, we're joined by a very special guest, Belleville Sens head coach, David Bell. And the great Dane returns. Mad Sogard signs a two-year extension, so we'll get into that. And there's something interesting within this contract. All that and more on today's Locked On Sens. I'm Jake Sanderson. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome! You are locked on to the Ottawa Senators, the only daily podcast covering the Sens. On the outskirts of enemy territory, I'm Ross Levitan, alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Still searching for a great candidate for your company? Don't search, just match with Indeed. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. You can follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, and you can get us wherever you find podcasts. We are free and available on YouTube, where we say hello and let you know that a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. We are still grinding away five days a week. Great guests awesome segments, and still some Sens news trickling out. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos go live. Today is Monday, July 15th, and Pilsy, amazing insight coming up with the head coach of the Belleville Sens, David Bell. I always feel smarter, and I have a few laughs every time I get to chat with him. Yeah, absolutely. David Bell's an absolute beauty. We're stoked that he's back as the bench boss of the Belleville Senators, and Every time we have him on, Ross, he he tells us a few stories during the interview that we love and then a few more stories after the interview that have us howling laughing. So uh, Belzy is a much must-watch interview. And it's going to be a must-watch team next year with all the additions. Not, to, not like we're penciling in anybody there, so don't look at us nope. like we're the Grim Reaper. Nope. However, they are going to be a very talented team on paper going into next season. And a big part of that is the return of starting goalie Mad Sogard. The Senators announced this morning they've re-signed the 23-year-old second-round pick from 2019. It's a two-year contract that's going to give him a high AHL salary in year one. And in year two, it's a one-way contract. We've seen this before. Philip Gustafson, Joey Decor, both of them earn these same types of contracts. And with Anton Forsberg and Linus Allmark, although we hope he re-signs, there will be, in all likelihood, at least one spot at the NHL level next season. What are your thoughts on the deal, the contract, and the player who's getting it? Ross, I love everything about this announcement. Uh, we were nervously anticipating, all right, no Mandalese signed, no Sogard signed, just Levy with the contract. What are, What's Belleville going to do? Are they going to bring in a new kind of vet AHL guy? How are they going to do this? But... They get the deal done with Mads. You love to see that. We were never in doubt that it wasn't going to get done, but it just get a little nervous as you get closer to training camp. Um, I think it's perfect the way they've set this out. They're giving him in the first year that high HL money, like you mentioned, to reward him, be like, you are the number one guy in Belleville. You're going to get paid like it. Let's have another great season in Belleville as last year in Belleville, other than when he first came into the league and went 7-0 and uh, back in 2021, he had his best year since. Um, in 32 games with Belleville, a 2.45 goals against, a .916 save percentage, two shutouts, and the, I love this, Ross. Look at this record, 18-9-3. and three. So he was helping the Belleville Centers win on their way to a couple playoff rounds as well where he was a solid goalie for them too. So that first year really showing him that he's their number one guy. And then having that second year be a one way really clearly lays out the plan that, all right, you've had your cups of coffee in the NHL due to injury. Unfortunately, he's had to go up there longer and kind of not on the terms, probably him or the senators wanted, but necessity happens. There's been a lot of injuries to the goaltenders in Ottawa around the years. So he has an NHL experience where now with that second year, it seems in all likelihood they have the plan is all mark when he signs and then Mad Sogard to be the backup in that year because he's 23 years old. He's been in the system for a while. At some point, you got to say, all right, either you can be 
a competent backup in the NHL, or we're going to have to try to work something else out here. So I think this is laid out perfectly, and this should be Mad Sogard's last year as a true Belleville goalie. And the that's perfect lead into the question mark around this is that Mad Sogard needs waivers at training camp. Do you think that maybe a bit of protection from the senator side is by giving him that second year one way? So whoever gets him is on the hook for his full salary in year two, but also by giving him that high AHL salary, two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. You might scare away a couple teams that maybe think about putting a claim in on him. Possibly, Ross. Uh, I would say, though, I I think it's more done as a message to Mads rather than kind of hindering other teams from claiming him. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I kind of feel like if there was to be some injuries, if it's short term, at least they would bring Levy up for a couple games just because they can send Levy back down uh, without worrying about waivers. Or at least I'm I'm pretty sure that's the case. and they would just keep Mads in Belleville. Because I think that was part of the issue with Mads' development here is he would start to get some momentum in Belleville and then, oh, we need you for 15 games up in the NHL. And then, you know, then his confidence gets shaky. He's not adjusted. It's not the transition you would want for a young goalie going to the NHL. So I think if they could keep him in Belleville for a full year, he knows where he's situated and he can focus on that. I think that would do a lot of good. Because Ross, like you look at, a 23-year-old goalie that was a second round pick, 37th overall in 2019, that's six foot seven and has a lot of potential. I think teams would be willing to take on that cap if it means they're getting him for free as a waiver claim. So it'll be interesting to see how they maneuver through that. It certainly will. Steve Steos agreeing with you. The upcoming season will serve as an important stepping stone for Mads. Steos also continuing in the press release saying Mads' development continues to progress, quote, with with considerable playoff experience this past spring. In addition to a strong regular season, he was able to gain additional confidence as a professional goaltender. Welcome back, Mad Sogard. Hopefully we get to break his helmet painting again like we did last year. Um, We'll reach out to his agent. We'd love to have Mads back on the show. He's just one of those introspective guys who really thinks the game at a high level and uh congratulations are ordered to him his whole family um and we're excited to see what next year brings for mad sogard now the streets are rumbling right now there could be another roster move on the way we'll keep you filled in on twitter at send central the martians all over this one as well it has to do with roby yarventi but we'll save that for tomorrow's show we've got a great interview to get to today and it happened moments after mad sign so we'll get thoughts on the senators top goalie prospect with the head coach of the belleville senators and a whole lot more interview with david bell is next you're listening to locked on senators your team every day today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at indeed we're driven by the search for better but when it comes to hiring the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search, match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. That helps you connect with candidates faster. And it doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every single day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join over 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored credit to get your job more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on the Locked On Senators podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Glebe Central Pub, located right in the heart of the Glebe at 779 Bank Street. The Glebe Central Pub is an awesome place to go 
like it was this past weekend with the Euros. I know England didn't bring it home, but the atmosphere was unbelievable. I felt so much fear of missing out just by watching their socials, Glebe Central Pub. It was a packed house for the Euros, and it's just giving me that itch that the home opener for the Sens is around the corner, and the Glebe Central Pub will be your place to go. Frankly, it's your place to go all summer as well, right by Lansdowne, walking distance from a great shopping district. So if you're heading down there, get hungry, get to the Glebe Central Pub. You thirsty, hot day, get to the Glebe Central Pub. You like darts, get to the Glebe Central Pub. You like events like trivia, like wing nights, like nacho, anything you can think of, they got it down at the Glebe Central Pub. So go support local, support the Glebe Central Pub right in the heart of Glebe at 779 Bank Street, making sure you mention that Locked On Senators sent you. They're an awesome local company that's just doing their best to create good vibes. The vibes are free at the GCP. Go visit them in the heart of the Glebe at 779 Bank Street and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. All right, now to our chat with Belleville Sens head coach. Here's David Bell. All right, we now welcome a very, very special guest back to Locked On Sens for the third time. His Belleville Sens, third time, third, one, two, three. His Belleville Sens are coming off a franchise best season, and he was rewarded with a multi-year contract extension. Head coach Dave Bell, welcome back. Congrats on the deal, coach. How's the summer going? Thanks for having me, boys. Three times I fooled you twice, so three times a charm here. Hope I don't mess it up. Well, one of our favorite parts is one of them was in person. It's not something we get to do all the time, being in different spots. It was great to see you last year at Dev Camp. Lots happened since then. Like when you have time now to sit back, think about the accomplishments of last season. What comes to mind first? Uh, pretty proud. Proud. Uh, it was a pretty. You know, a lot of transition happened in the last 12 months with the organization, with me especially, so in this team down here. So to keep our head above water and, and do what we did was we were pretty proud as a group and as an organization to, you know, write things down here, keep it as calm as we could, and then and then accomplish a couple of things. So it was pretty proud. Yeah, a historic season for the Belleville Senators, and you make it to the second round of the playoffs. Tell us about that playoff experience uh, for the first time with the Belleville Senators. It was good. I mean, it. I think that's one of the biggest things we we needed to do here for our, our prospects. And again, there's guys, and not it's not on their fault, but like guys like Batherson and Norris and, and even Shabbat and those guys have never experienced the playoffs at that level or the American League level. So. To now get the you know, stop Chucks and the Clevens and the Soul Guards this experience, you know, it's it's not the NHL playoffs, but, you know, our building was rock and Cleveland was rock and, and you know, there there's 12,000 fans. And just to see the elevation of the, the play and the detail and the urgency for those guys to do it and what was at stake, um, I think it was a huge, a valuable, valuable experience for those guys. And you were there in 2019, 2020 on the bench. And like I, I told Troy Mann when we had him on, I was already getting fitted for my Calder Cup ring. You know, we were in the production team. <laughs> you guys were so loaded that year. De- Decord was in net. You had Branch from Willan and so many guys who went on to, to do good things. And obviously you mentioned Norris and Batherson. So did that kind of add a little more anticipation to the people who had been there since before COVID? Yeah, they're, they're you know, that year, when did that end? February. So you, you guys know, were first place. Stay- excitement was building it was it was going to be you know hopefully a long run they had built a great team great prospect pool so that was that was disappointing that was tough to get over because they had you know there'd been some hard times and some developing times just like we just went through the cycle again so that that was a big kick in the kick in the nads there but uh you know, to get back and do it again with, again, another new prospect pool was good and obviously didn't get as far as we needed to or wanted to, but um, some of those pieces are back, so hopefully we can do it again. Yeah, and I think a big part of the the success story too, Coach, is – how important that was for the community. Uh, I went to a bunch of the home games in the playoffs and that building was packed. It was louder than I'd ever really heard it before. How did that feel for you being able to soak in that playoff atmosphere in Belleville? It it was special, just like I said, because I live here in in the season and in the off season. So, you know, to drive home and it's springtime and the snow's gone and 
just driving through my neighborhood and people are giving you the thumbs up on their front lawn or you, you go, uh, you know, to the grocery store and, and people start to recognize the players or recognize you. And it's, it's pretty neat for that fact that the guys to get behind it. I mean, I, I played uh, against these guys in junior when they were the bulls uh, coached against them when they were the bulls. And actually the last time they went to, uh, and one, I think I was in Sudbury and they lost, we lost these guys in the second round and the building was loud. But I thought last, you know, this playoff run and that, and those home games, it was as loud as any building's been. Uh, the atmosphere, the players certainly fed off it. You see the, the Sokolov videos and the guys, you know, it, it was special and it was awesome. And, um, you know, when you have exit meetings with the guys after the season's over, they talked about it, recruiting guys in the off season to come and play here. They heard about it, so um, it's a neat place. It's a neat place. You're not you're not Chicago. You're not San Jose. You're not San Diego, but it's a different vibe here. And I think um, the playoffs there certainly help the vibe. And, and guys enjoy playing here. And you mentioned the Sokolov moment. There was a goal you scored in the first round against the Marlies. And look, you're an, you're a, a coach of a developmental league, so you're talking about technique quite a bit. How do we think the fans' technique is? Top and middle of the screen there. Do you think he's doing a good enough fist pump? We can zoom right in on that. We need it. What do we got? We need a full report there. Is the beer sturdy? We need to make sure that Pillsy's doing it right here at the Belleville Sens games. I want to know why he only has one beer in his hand. Should be double fisted. That's a good Probably question. Could be a stone cold moment there to be chugging it with one <laughs> and fist pumping another, but. Uh, I'd give him, I'd give him above average though. The Jersey's good. Nice. Uh, don't know what's, what's the name bar on the back. We'd have to evaluate that. That's an Igor Sokolov Jersey. Coach. Okay, Ready to so go. Top marks, top marks there. So I, I would give it a definite uh, passing grade for sure, but double fisted would be, would be good. Would be good. Next playoffs, yeah. next playoffs. I'll make sure. And I'll the poor guy, the the guy underneath you there. Uh, I guess you don't want to spill beer on that massive man in the pink t-shirt there that could bench press you 42 times. So you might want to behave a little bit. I get it. I get where you're coming from. Hey, yeah. he said, make it to the second round. He'll get a second beer. So next year we're holding it through that, <laughs> but no, that's, that's awesome. And it just kind of it put, paints a picture of what the atmosphere was in CA arena. I had FOMO missing out, but just speak to the difference in every league. There's those dog days of the middle of the season, but it's all worth it when you can fill the seats like that. Hey. Yeah, it was. And a guy like Igor and Reinhardt and guys that have been through it, and we've had some some not great attendance in some parts of the season, and everybody goes through it, and not to be in the playoffs. So for those guys to play empty buildings in COVID, some, you know, like you said, a, a game in January on a Wednesday night against Utica where there's not many people and there's not much atmosphere, you know, that, that was all worth it and paid off. And uh, hopefully we can keep that momentum going. I mean, they're fun games. Obviously, a huge rivalry with Toronto and Laval. Keep that going. Get some more fans in here and uh, hopefully have an exciting exciting season at home in the CAA. Hey, we got breaking news. May as well have the coach on with us. Your goalie's coming back. Mad Sogard agreeing to terms on a new deal with the Sens. Two-year deal. Second year is one way. Uh, what can you speak to his development? Because you've seen him since he turned pro. Remember, how, didn't he start 7-0 and when he when he joined you guys? And and yeah. He's yeah. just kind of... He, he Go ahead. Came over in the COVID year, right at the end of the year, and we we're like, "Who is this guy?" And again, we had, I think we had Gus, and uh, I don't know who else we had that was year. It, Gus. Was it Hogberg? Might have no, been Hogberg. Hoggy had gone, so it had been Gus and was Decord there? Yeah, the COVID year. Yeah, because he stepped in for Matt Murray twice or three times. But yeah, so we, anyways, it was the season where there was no playoff implications or ever. So it was, you know, yeah. the token, hey, we're going to bring this kid over and he's going to play and you want to see what he's got. So let's play him every game. And he went seven and oh, and they're like, who is this guy? He was phenomenal and just a great big tree of a kid and awkward guy. But no, his development, uh, Justin Peters, been awesome with him. Um, matured as a person, matured as a teammate, matured as a goaltender. Um, obviously, had success last year in the playoffs for us and getting us through that Toronto round and then playing really good against uh, Greaves was outstanding uh, for Cleveland there and carried them right through the conference finals. But um, he's just a guy that goalies, you know, kind of goes goalies defensemen forward as far as uh, maturity and, and having to be patient with them. And he's, he's doing all the things, checking all the boxes, um, working hard. So I'm glad to see him rewarded with it. And hopefully, obviously, you see the the confidence the organization has to give him a one-way in that second year. But, um, you know, he'll push for a spot this year, I'm sure. And uh, 
get some games this year at some point up in the big club. Now, Mads is one of the players that's returning to Belleville, but we talked about it. There's been a lot of transition for this team and for you over the last year uh, year here. What? How do you work on maintaining an identity or creating a new identity when so many key characters have left the team? You look at Sokolov, Hetherington, Boko Imama, Lassie Thompson. Like a lot of these guys were mainstays and big parts of this team's culture. So how do you work on keeping a culture or do you have to change the culture um the identity of the team might change i think a little bit i think they've probably uh increased the skill set but the culture uh it won't change i think there's enough rollover and it's it is a a loss in the in the to lose your captain and guys like soko and that but you know i think ryan and sean and steve obviously do a lot of work in in character references of guys before we look at stats and and how they play uh, and there's a certain type of person that obviously they like and that i like and we align in that thought process of them being good people and hard workers so i i don't think the cultural change i i think people know what i want and what i need when they step in our room and they and they step in line and i think there's enough guys left over that have been here multiple years and, and guys like Pilon and Highmore that bought in last year that can carry it over. So I think there might be a little different uh, on ice uh, that might look a little bit different, but the, the culture inside the dressing room and, and the day to day isn't going to change here. Right. Cause you hear that we just had Oscar Patterson on uh, earlier last week and he said, Jacob Larson being there, just having another Swede to rely on. And, you know, even if it's just getting groceries or whatever the day-to-day -day things are that you go through, it's important to have that veteran presence around. And you certainly added some guys as well. What's a coach think when you get the league's leading goal scorer from last year with Adam <laughs> Goddeck coming on a two-way deal? Well, I, I did smile and I don't smile very often. And, and <laughs> We've I got a couple out of you here, coach. <laughs> But uh, you know what? It's those are weird ones because he's still a guy that you know that I believe wants to compete for a spot with Ottawa. So I'm like the Grim Reaper right now in the summertime and in training camp. Nobody wants to talk to the American League coach. Nobody wants to look at me because, and rightfully so, they they want to talk to Travis Green. They want to be in the Ottawa Centers. They want to be in the NHL. So I kind of I, I reach out to these guys, but just to say hello and not talk about hey, this is what we're going to do in Belleville because I hope their focus and their focus should be on making Ottawa. So those are those are tricky ones. But if he ever did fall um, to us in Belleville, I would probably uh, be the first to go unlock the door and uh, find him a seat in the dressing room. Look, you, you mentioned Adam got that, but the back end, we mentioned the losses to Hetherington and Lassie. How much is it the internal growth? And you've got a couple of young guys coming in. Jory and Donovan impressed the last uh, dev camp and last season as a whole. How how do you ingrain these young guys into a, a grind of a season in the AHL? Is there a plan going into it of like, hey, if it's a back-to-back, -back, maybe early in the season, they'll sit one? Or what goes into the thought process when you're bringing in him and Tomas Hamara as well? Yeah, there, there is a thought process and the same, probably the biggest example was the goalies and, and you talked about them earlier was like Sogi, there was times where we went the other way last year where, you know, you had a very capable goalie in Marilyn and Amanda Lee sitting there uh, ready to play and, and rested, but you know, as an organization, you feel that, okay, we, he needs to learn how to play back to backs or play getting off a bus and travel and he may not have his A game but this is a learning process for him. So do we sacrifice the, I don't know, the quote, the odds of winning the game of having the healthy rested goalie, but the development of, of Mads to, to learn how to win with his so-called B game or tired game. So those conversations definitely happen. And, you know, I've been in it long enough that you understand and see, you know, guys get tired like Tyler Clevin last year, you know, all of a sudden playing a full schedule, not a college schedule, you know, he hit a wall there for two weeks, three weeks in January. And, and admittedly said, you know, you know, I, I I'm usually I've played enough games. I, I have to rejig my sleep schedule, my eating schedule, my diet, my workout. And, and th so that's expected. So with, with uh, Jory and Donovan and guys like this coming in, it's just a monitor them. Some guys can handle it. Some guys need to uh, be backed off a bit, but we got so many support staff, the strength guys, the mental people that, you know, monitor them and they come in and say, Hey, you need to back off this guy or this guy needs a break or, or this guy's 
shooting the lights out, uh, you know, in the gym, you can push them more. So awesome support staff. And there's pr- a lot of guys with fingers in the pot to, to make sure these guys get the best opportunity. And speaking of the young guys, uh, Ross and I, one of our favorite times of the year is dev camp. What can you tell us about this year's dev camp? Were there some players that particularly stood out to you? I think so. I mean, it was a different dev camp with the coaching change up top. I thought it was an, actually a really, really good week for us as coaches. To, uh, for me personally, to Travis and his staff were were outstanding and welcoming to me. And it, it was great. But uh, as far as the players, I, I thought you can tell like the Oscar Petersons and the Stephen Hallidays that have just played a little bit of pro. Just They're just that much more savvy and 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 they know what to do and they understand a little bit more. So they, they stood out just for obvious reasons, but I, I thought a um, couple guys for me was the goaltender. Kevin Riedler was yep. outstanding battle. He was great on the mic'd up video too. He seems oh, like a funny he? guy. Yeah. He, he works his tail off. Um, I thought, um, let me see here. One of the, the draft picks this year, Montgomery, I thought yeah. for a guy, I really like the way he skated. He kind of jumped off the page when you're out there and, you know, they're all flying by when you're out there, but then certain guys come by and go, Whoa, that guy, you know, that guy was really moving or whatever. And, and he popped off the page a couple times for me, but uh, I thought, I just thought overall it was a big camp, huge camp, lots of people on the ice, big bodies. And there was nobody out there that you're like, Oh man, this guy can't skate or it's just a pretty, a pretty deep, good group of kids out there. And I want to follow up. You mentioned uh, how Dev Camp was a little different with Travis Green, and they were welcoming to you. What's that like when a new head coach comes to the NHL team for you being in the AHL? Like, how do you kind of work that relationship and build chemistry? And and what's the kind of process of communication like for you when a new guy's brought in? Uh, he was awesome. Right away when he was hired, he reached out to me. Uh, well, actually, let's just back that up. When once I got signed, he was signed first. So after <laughs> after I was signed, he reached out to me right away and was unbelievably welcoming. But um, it was great. Uh, first of all, he understood. He knew part of my process of my interview process was to be in line with whoever was going to be the coach in Ottawa. And I'm perfectly fine with that. And I think we did a good job with DJ. And then when Jacques took over, we, we you know we switched some systems down here. So to let him know that. I'm just an extension to him and a voice for him down here and to try to get guys, you know, what he wants, what makes him tick so I can get guys down here prepared as best I possibly can. So when they do go up, it's seamless for them. They know his language. They know what he likes. They know how he likes to play. Uh, So we had a lot of conversations about that. Just me getting to know him, how he coaches, how he runs his team, what he thinks he needs to be done down here, the expectations of guys here. So it was great. A lot of information was shared. A lot of, uh, you know, just getting to know each other was there. But again, he was he was awesome. So I, I really look forward to working with him. Coach, you're going into your 20th season behind a bench at any level. <laughs> like, that's awesome. And I mean, you're young. You're, you're not even 50 years old yet. Like, that's yeah. that's super impressive to me that you've already got all this experience. And we know the hockey world's all interconnected. Did you have any previous relationship or, you know, mutual friends with Travis Green? What did you know about him before he reached out? Uh, no, I, I knew a few people that have worked with him and stuff. Obviously, like you said, been in the game a long time. And everybody had great things to say about him. Everybody said, you know, exactly what he was. A great community educator, a great down-to-earth guy um family oriented guy you know the first conversation we had um we talked zero hockey we talked about our families talked about you know where he lives where i live what our families do um so that was a big thing for me that's big with me so um kind of hit it off i thought we hit it off well so um you know i'm excited to see what he does in ottawa and i'm excited to you know hopefully help help get guys up there and get playing for him Oh, before we get off of Dev Camp, I wanted to ask you too, because you're the one that uh, gave us the insider scoop that uh, Brian McGratton was teaching guys how to pound heads last year in uh, in camp. Were there any special guests this year uh, roaming around the hallways? Oh, let me see. I don't. I don't think they had that out there this year. Well, have uh, you had a chance to chat with Alfie yet at all? Now that he's on the coaching staff. Yeah, I did. It was. Uh, it was pretty neat. Pretty surreal. Uh, Travis, you know, had a coach's 
it's, I don't know what to, what to call it, a symposium, but every day we sat and just talked and did video. And I was bookmarked between Alfie and Jacques in the, in the room. And you wow. kind of sit there and you're like, all right, yeah, these two probably know a thing or two about <laughs> hockey, so I should probably pay attention. Um, but um, they were awesome. And again, Alfie was good, you know, talked hockey, talked uh, talk sports, talked pretty much anything. He's a competitive dude, uh, awesome guy. Uh, we golfed one day. Uh, I think he won. He cleaned up everybody, but um, as Sounds expected. Right. Yeah. But uh, no, it was a great week. It was a great week for that. Again, a lot of work, a lot of information, a lot of philosophies, a lot of theories. You know, strengths and weaknesses of of the organization. I, I thought it was a really in depth, good uh, good work week there for the coaches. And we know Jacques Martin is expected to stay on. You just mentioned he's at Dev Camp. Is he a guy who's planning to reach out to you every once in a while when he sees something? What kind of involvement do you think he's going to have in the organization at the Belleville Sens level? Uh, he, he offered anything that I needed as our staff. He wants to try to get down here sometimes to, to take in games live, uh, you know, maybe come down, watch practices, talk to players, give me advice. I mean, he's, he's – Hall of Fame guy that you know I I bent his year all week asking him about scenarios so uh, I and he open invitation to that all year so I expect to see him in Belleville uh, some game sometimes and uh, again just another huge asset for the organization to have a guy of that knowledge that I can just pick up the phone and talk to and ask questions to a little bit different in demeanor than your old pal Brian Kilray uh, I would say they they approach. Uh, Public speaking differently. <laughs> hey, both a ton of success. And hey, as many tricks as you can add into your bag, right? Into your toolbox, per se. I mean, that's probably just going to help you in the future, right? Absolutely. A guy like that, anybody. Any, you walk into any room, if you listen enough, you'll learn something from everybody in the room and some people more. So uh, got a lot of knowledge that week from from those guys, Alfie and Travis and, and, and Jacques. It was, it was a great week, like I said. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, now, final question for me here, Coach. You, we talked about your first impression of Mad Sogard, friend of the show. Uh, I want to get your first impression of another friend of the show, a guy we've really loved watching his development. He's Stephen coming on Wednesday. Yeah, Stephen Halliday. What was it like when he first came in? I don't know if you know the story, but famously, when we first interviewed him, I mentioned to him that, oh, you're not really a playmaker guy. You're more of a goal scorer. And he stopped me and he's like, no, I had like 66 assists last year. So we kind of, I kind of get dunked on uh, for saying that he wasn't a playmaker. And he walks, he walks into Belleville and he's dishing out apples left, right, and center. So what was your first thoughts when Halliday came onto the scene? He's a well, uh, I got, yeah, he, he is. I don't know what you were watching there, Brandon, but I don't know uh, either. Honestly, sometimes I say things and it just doesn't even make any sense. So, <laughs> um, well, you know what? First, Jesse Winchester gave me an unbelievable profile of what he was. Jesse worked with him his whole college career and kind of was his liaison. So Jesse kind of filled me into what he was going to be. And like you said, like very analytically driven, knows the stats of everybody in the league, but, um, you know what? He's a great story. And for me as a coach, for him to come in and it, things weren't easy for him in, in college, but he was just so good there. You know, he could do what he wanted. And the transition and the learning curve for him, it was super steep and he exceeded it. He, he figured out the league. It took him two weekends to figure out the league and where the quiet spots were and where guys were to go. And, you know, you know, it's a special player when the guys played four or five games in the league and people start knocking on your door Hey, uh, think I could be on Halliday's wing. Hey, uh, <laughs> nice. think I could be on the power play unit with Halliday on it. Uh, you know, when those conversations and those knocks on your door happen, that he's a sp uh, pretty special player. So I'm excited for him. And again, just to get those whatever many games he played at the end, and then obviously the unbelievable playoffs he had, it's a huge uh, jumping point for him to have a head start this year. I think it was awesome that he came in and had success. So, um, I'm excited to watch how this guy grows. Well, uh, he liked what your decision was. He said, put me on Boko Imama's line, and I felt four <laughs> inches taller out there and 30 pounds heavier. So um, he certainly appreciated that. Just like we appreciate you, Coach, and um, all the insight that you're sharing with me, us, and all of our listeners here, where you mentioned, hey, go into any room, you learn a little bit. I feel smarter after another conversation with you. So, you know, we always appreciate doing this. 
big expectations and a lot of talent in Belleville next year. We're excited to see how it all comes together and uh, we'll catch up with you again down the road. All right, man. I'm excited too. enjoy your summer. Uh, do a little more video on Stevie. Look at his 60 assists there. So when you have him on, we can talk about his assists, but uh, that's awesome. Well, he's going to, uh, he's going to make it himself. I don't know if you know this about him, but he makes highlight tapes. Like he's a video editor. He might be our, our new YouTube social media guy. There, I just learned, there you go. There, I learned something new again. Would there be a Dave Bell fight compilation, hit compilation, or points compilation of his career? Which <laughs> would you be most proud to see back? Well, you'd have to go back to VHS, so good luck with that. <laughs> and um, you know what? I, I don't know. The, the game was different then, so... You can find I, you can find both. You can I don't think you can find I don't think you can find any goals on there, but there is a few <laughs> interactions on YouTube, but not not too many. They're all locked up on VCA v, VHS tapes in my basement. Kick out to Coach Bell for joining us. Really fun conversation with him. Can't wait to see what happens next year with the Belleville Senators. All right, Pilsy, final thoughts on today's show. Yes, final thoughts for me, and we'll get into this more on tomorrow's episode, but Laleem's Martian has broken the Roby Yarventi trade, and we were talking to Coach Bell after, and he told us that Yarventi is one of the most talented players he's seen come through the Belleville system. So certainly it's tough to see him go, but I'm I'm intrigued and excited about the return they got, so it's going to be fun breaking down this trade tomorrow. Yes, it will. Xavier Borgo and Jake Chasson in exchange for Roby Arventi and a fourth round pick in 2025. So in next year's draft, we'll break it down tomorrow. Too much to get into today, <laughs> yeah. including I'm also going to tee up a little trivia that oh. I pulled up just out of curiosity. I wanted to see how many Sens have scored at or above a point per game in a single season. Minimum 50 games. Okay, we'll have the answer on tomorrow's show. So that's who's played a minimum of 50 games in a season. How many Senators have scored at or above a point per game in a season? And the hint is that six players have done it multiple times. And we'll let you guess the rest in the comments below. A little Tuesday trivia. For our friends here at Locked On Senators, we're going to do fun little segments like this over the course of the next month or two. We've got our Ring of Honors already in the hopper. We'll get to one later this week or next, and a whole lot more throughout a summer of Send Central. Yep. All right, that's it for today's show. Hope you enjoyed our conversation with David Bell. Another interview coming on Wednesday and more. So make sure you follow us on Twitter at Send Central for the latest updates. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day.